Have you ever wondered how to create a database in SQL? Well, you're about to unravel the mystery. A database, at its most basic, is a logical container where we store data. It's like a virtual warehouse with shelves filled with information, ready for us to access whenever we need it. Now imagine being the master of that warehouse. That's where SQL comes in. SQL, or Structured Query Language, is the language we use to manage and manipulate these databases. It's like the instruction manual for our warehouse, guiding us on how to organize, access and modify our stored data. Creating a database in SQL is a journey, a process that involves several steps. But don't worry, it's not as daunting as it sounds. Once you get the hang of it, it's a smooth ride. So buckle up! Creating a database in SQL is a process that involves several steps which we will delve into. Before diving into the creation process, you need to understand SQL management tools. These are the applications that enable us to interact with our database, create and manage data, and perform all sorts of database operations. Let's start with MySQL Workbench. This graphical interface tool is designed for MySQL databases. It provides data modeling, SQL development, and comprehensive administration tools for server configuration, user administration, and much more. It's like a Swiss army knife for handling MySQL databases. Then we have the PostgreSQL command line interface, also known as PSQL. This is a terminal-based front-end from PostgreSQL and it offers an interactive prompt to the user. You can use it to type in queries and have them executed against a PostgreSQL database. It's a little less user-friendly than MySQL Workbench, but it's just as powerful when you get the hang of it. For PostgreSQL, you also have the option of using pgAdmin. This is a free and open source management tool for PostgreSQL and its derivatives. It offers a graphical interface which makes it more user-friendly, especially for beginners. With pgAdmin, you can manage and manipulate databases, write and execute queries, and even visualize your data structures. These tools, along with others like SQL Server Management Studio for Microsoft SQL Server or Oracle SQL Developer for Oracle Databases, are designed to make it easier to work with SQL databases. They provide a user-friendly interface to interact with your database, and they come packed with features for managing data, running queries, and configuring your server. Remember, the tool you choose depends on the SQL database system you're working with. MySQL Workbench won't work with PostgreSQL databases, and vice versa. It's like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. It just won't work. So, choose your management tool wisely. These tools are specific to the database system you're working with and are essential for creating a database. They not only simplify the process, but also provide a wealth of additional features that can make your life as a database enthusiast a whole lot easier. Now you're ready to create a database using SQL statements. Creating a database in SQL is like defining a new playground where your data can frolic freely. The SQL statement to create a new database is quite straightforward. It's as simple as saying, create database, followed by your choice of a database name. So let's say we want to create a new database. We'd write the following SQL statement, create database database underscore name. Of course, you'll want to replace database underscore name with the name you've chosen for your database. It's your creation after all, so make it personal. Imagine we're building a database for our new project. We could name it my underscore database. So the SQL statement would read, create database my underscore database. And voila, you've created your very own database. But what if you're not sure whether the database has been created? No worries, you can verify its existence with a simple command. In many database systems like MISQL, you can list all your databases using the command show databases. This command will display a list of all the databases on your server, including the one you've just created. However, do bear in mind that creating a database requires certain permissions. You need to ensure that you have the necessary privileges to create databases on the server you're working on. If you're unsure, it's always a good idea to check with your system administrator. In summary, Creating a database using SQL statements is a straightforward process, but it's crucial to remember that you need the appropriate permissions to do so. Once you've created your database, you can start creating tables and populating them with data. So the next time you're tasked with creating a database, remember this simple formula. Create database, followed by your desired database name, and just like that, you're a database creator. Remember, replace a database underscore name with the name you desire for your database. 
After creating your database, you may want to specify additional options. These options, which can be quite varied, depend on the specific database system you're working with. For instance, if you're using MySQL, you might choose to specify a storage engine. This engine determines how data is stored and retrieved within your database. You could opt for the default InnoDB engine or perhaps the memory storage engine, which stores data in memory for faster access. Equally important is the character set and collation for text data. The character set is a set of symbols and encodings, while collation is a set of rules that determine how data is sorted and compared. By specifying these, you ensure your database can handle data in different languages and sort it correctly. Now once you've created your database and specified your desired options, it's essential to verify the database's creation. Think of this as a final check to make sure your database is ready for action. There are two main ways to do this. The first way is to check the list of databases in your database management tool. If you've created your database correctly, it should appear in this list. This is a quick and easy way to confirm that your database is up and running. The second way is to run a command to list databases. For instance, if you're using MySQL, you can run the command show databases. This command will display a list of all databases on the server, including the one you just created. It's another reliable way to verify your database's creation. Remember, these steps are not just about creating a database. They're about creating a database that works for you. By specifying options and verifying your database, you're setting yourself up for success. And a final note, creating a database requires appropriate permissions. So before you dive in, always ensure that you have the necessary privileges to create databases on the server where you're working. Creating a database in SQL might seem daunting at first, but with practice, it becomes second nature. We've journeyed together through the process of creating a database in SQL, starting with a basic understanding of SQL management tools. SQL databases are generally created using these tools which are specific to the database system you are working with. We've seen how MySQL databases are crafted using MySQL Workbench or the MySQL command line interface, and how PostgreSQL databases come to life using pjadmin or the PostgreSQL command line interface. Moving forward, we delved into the heart of the matter, creating a database using SQL statements. We learned that the backbone of creating a database in SQL is the create database command, where you replace database underscore name with the name of your choice for your database. An example we used was create database my underscore database, which would create a database named my underscore database. From there, we explored the various options available when creating a database. Depending on the database system you're using, there could be additional options to specify, like character set and collation for text data, or the storage engine if you're using MySQL. Always remember to refer to the documentation of your database management system for more details. Finally, we talked about verification, the process of ensuring your database was created successfully. This can be done by checking the list of databases in your database management tool, or by running a command to list databases. In MySQL, for instance, you can list all databases using the show databases command. But it's important to remember, creating a database requires the right permissions. So always ensure that you have the necessary privileges to create databases on the server where you're working. And there you have it. We've covered the essentials of creating a database in SQL, from understanding the tools at your disposal to crafting your own database using SQL statements. Remember, practice makes perfect. Keep refining your skills and soon creating a database in SQL will be a breeze for you.